Not that long ago, I made a short saying you could upgrade the sound of your speakers with a piece of software. And that's still true, but there's a lot more to explain how this actually works and what its limitations are. But what if I told you this piece of software could also upgrade your headphones? I think it's time we took a dive into Sound ID Reference. So, uh, what is it? Well, it's basically calibration for your headphones or speakers, but with a lot of really cool features. Now, none of that might make much sense right now, and is all of that really worth it? Well, let's dig a little bit deeper, starting with headphones. This is the DT700 Pro X from Bear Dynamic, and this, this is its frequency response. Not too crazy, some dips and some peaks, but it could be improved. Now here is Sound ID Reference. I'm going to enable the calibration profile for this headphone, and you can see it's doing a reverse of where it thinks this headphone has flaws. Now I'll just turn the calibration on, and we have this. And the green line you see here is the headphone with the calibration enabled. That's a pretty impressive difference already. We see good natural ear gain around three kilohertz like we want to see. But the cool thing is you don't just have to use their target. You can use Dolby Atmos target. You can use a custom target and put your own EQ curves on top of their flat curve to make things sound however you want, but while still eliminating big things like dips and peaks. But here's the feature that really sold me on this. This is great for professionals, people editing audio and video. You can perform a translation check. Essentially, you can make it sound like a car, a laptop, other popular headphones like AirPods, smartphone speakers, studio speakers, and so on. Basically turning one headphone into an entire actually viable mixing suite. Now all that's cool, but where this really shines to me is in the world of speakers. So let's dig into that. The process for calibrating speakers is pretty simple. You just need a mic interface and an output to your speakers. The speakers use a series of pops. It's a bit odd at first, but they do this to locate where you're standing in the room with the microphone. It's actually really cool. You can see yourself moving around on the screen as you're walking around the room with the mic. This is honestly a lot more in depth than if you were just to measure something on your own and try and correct for it. You might do a handful of measurements in a few locations, do some averaging, try and figure out some artifacts and whatnot, but this is a really, really, really in-depth process, taking a lot of measurements, accommodating for a lot of different things in the room. And when it's done, you can apply the calibration profile, but it's not just EQ. There's also this little checkbox called listening spot. This accommodates for sample delay in the room. And I'm sure you've probably heard a set of speakers that have that phantom image where the center area between the speakers sort of meshes together. You get this strong center vocal and it becomes wide and spacious and just really, really crazy. This is literally a checkbox that makes that happen because it perfectly timelines each speaker to where you're sitting. The results are pretty crazy. From super, super cheap speakers like the Dayton B452 Airs that are $40, $50 a pair, up to these triangles, my Vandersteens, Magnapans, everything that I've put on it has sounded incredible. I would go so far as to say that a cheap set of speakers properly calibrated sounds better than an expensive pair of speakers that is not calibrated. Though a truly exceptional speaker will raise the ceiling of performance when paired with this software. Like with headphones, you don't just have to use their target, you can customize it, you can use an Atmos target, a translation check, whatever it is that you're after. And you're not just limited to two-channel setups, you can do this with surround. It's not all perfect, there are some downsides to the software and this system. If you have an absolute garbage speaker, it's not going to be able to fix it. You have to start out with something that already has some decent components, 
I wouldn't go buy something from Goodwill and expect it to turn into a Genelec. The other main downside is that you have to use this with a computer. You can't just calibrate it and then be like, all right, I'm gonna go plug up to my TV instead. No, your source is your computer in this scenario. The other downside for headphones is you are adding a very small amount of latency. It could be anywhere between eight and like 30 to 40 milliseconds, depending on how heavy the things you're doing are. So if you're gaming and you have to do some very, very, very heavy corrections, you're going to get very minute latency, which could be a problem for some people. I think that roughly 20, 30 milliseconds isn't going to cause problems, but if it goes over that, you might start to notice it. For reference, a lot of Bluetooth devices that people complain about with latency are in the realm of 140, 150 milliseconds. The other thing is unit variation. Every pair of headphones does vary just a little bit. Even if you buy two of the exact same model, they're not gonna measure the exact same. So the calibrations are gonna be very close, but they're not gonna be exact. If you need it to be exact, you have to send in your pair of headphones and have them send you back an individual calibration profile. That said, a lot of headphones, the variance is pretty small, some it's larger than others. And the last downside is the price. It's not particularly cheap. Uh, I think it's a good value if you're buying it for headphones only. If you already have a measurement mic, it's pretty affordable for headphones and speakers. The total package with the measurement microphone for headphones and speakers is around $300. That's not cheap, but then again, that is an upgrade to your entire audio system for both your headphones and your speakers and the ability to measure it and not have to buy additional equipment. I think for the vast majority of people, they'll be happy with just sound ID reference for headphones. That's the most affordable option. That's what makes sense to me. And I do think that this will take the performance of a headphone that's at a lower price to higher than it's already at. I mean, $400, could you buy a pair of headphones that is better than your current pair of headphones? I don't think that's very likely if you already have a decent headphone like a 6XX or anything from Bayer or anything from Sennheiser or a Hyphenman or whatever. So in my mind, $100 is a worthy upgrade to a headphone you already have in your collection. But again, that really is up to you. I'm just here to lay it all out on the table and you guys can figure it out. So guys, that is going to wrap up this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. Comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can hit the forums, link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until next one, guys. Peace.